Yo, yo, check it out. You're about to get into the new episode of DOD 45 with my man Art by Ty. And check it out. On this one, it's an extra special one. You got my campy stop brother, Crayola. The mighty, mighty visual artist, Crayola. The legendary Crayola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. Yo, look where all that clicking got you. It's Cast One, and you're tuning in to DOD 45, right along with me. And we're about to listen to Ty talk to my favorite artist and soon to be best friend, Greg Crayola Simpkins. He's a maestro of the paintbrush as well as the indisputable king of lettering and made a hobby of emptying my wallet on his website, imscared.com. So sit back and get upset with yourself because you're definitely not as good at wiggling a pen on paper as these guys. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? This is the DOD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty, and with my co host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45 minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. Greetings, humans. Oh, qua tenzin wan. Malo sali. I cannot believe you're still saying that. The oh, qua tenzin yes. wan. I know. I'm, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna hold on to it because I because I you don't think people talk it. about... Um, Aliens? Well, I don't think they talk about... Uh, um, uh, no, his name just... They don't see? need to talk no. about him. Why, Why would you, not? Why did you talk about him? Because he was such a, a interesting guy and, and I... I truly believe he really he, believed what he, he might said. Might as well do the elegant Elliot Hoffman. What did he say? Uh, I don't know. Elegant had a great one. Oh, shit. I wish I'd have to check with Jake. Because Elliot Hoffman. We're speaking of... Boy, my, I have lost names a lot recently. It's scary when that happens. Martin. Riley Martin. That's where my Oqua Tanzan Juan comes from. Riley Martin was a, uh, a regular on the Howard Stern show and, and, and actually had his own show. I just think it's ridiculous, the Ocon twins. I know, ball, but whatever. I never tell you not to do something or never tell you anything you do is ridiculous, ever. I've never said anything you do is ridiculous. So, Just putting that out there. Well, <laughs> someone has to tell you. <laughs> That's true. That being said, I mean, someone should tell me I've been duck walking for the last three days in the garden, <laughs> planting little tiny specimens of creeping thyme. I've got up to about 200 of them in and it's ridiculous. I feel like a crackhead out there, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying no. I'm replacing our water sucking lawn with a alternative. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's ridiculous. Like, I'm just waiting. Someone needs to tell me. Well, going back on what we said there. Yeah, you're right. I always tell people I've I've always loved that you will, without a doubt, tell me what's shit and what's not. But I think the Oqua tends to not stay in it. So we'll see. You know, Whatever. like you said, it was funny you mentioned from our atmosphere, our first atmosphere episodes or episode when we had um, Slug and Mr. Dibs on. Mm -hmm. I think I was our our third episode, our very first episode was Sage Francis. Our second episode was Chesky. Our third episode was Atmosphere. And uh, I was wearing the drawing jacket and I was mm -hmm. I was going to go for the drawing and jacket. And your glasses, thing. I think, too. Well, and I still want I tried to do the glasses on uh, abilities interview. Yes. Or last week. I feel like I need him because I was telling you that earlier this week, my vision doesn't seem like it's going away. But it, when I put these, they're these glasses on they're not even it's a very minuscule farsighted nearsighted what do you mean prescription levels? it's a very minuscule is that the word prescription oh, yeah shit. yeah and but it's still it seems crisper when i look through them than it than it has been 
I'm 45 now. So the do- the last time I went for an eye check was about four years ago. And he did say, probably in three years, you're going to start, uh, it's going to start, you're going to start noticing it. But I've never had glasses in my life. I've never, I've always had really good vision. So I don't know, I don't know what happens. Like, I don't know, like, is it just get totally blurry or does it start to, because you guys, I issues. have, you need to wear, you have to wear contacts and glasses. I have, to, well, I don't have to, but I have an astigmatism. So I get like the light bothers me and it blurs me um, the things up ahead, like on road signs and stuff. I can't really make it out. Does it get worse at night? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like when we watch movies, I don't want any lights on except for the TV because it just, I don't know, it does something. But my vision actually isn't very bad at all. It's just the football shaped eyeballs. Well, football shaped. Oh, that's right. Football shaped. Well, anyway, so I I tried those glasses on for uh, abilities episode yesterday or last week. And I just don't like having glasses on when I'm drawing. Well, it's hard to have them on with headphones and a hat. Too. Yeah, that hurt. It actually hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't, it, for some reason, maybe it's those glasses. Maybe I need to get some of those thin glasses like what Gwyneth Paltrow was wearing during her um, court case. <laughs> have you seen any I of don't... that? She got in a ski accident oh. in uh, Deer Valley. Here? In, yeah, in 2016. Oh. And the guy's trying to sue her. For getting in an accident, and and apparently he's the one that ran into her, and oh. now he says, you know what's crazy? It's this is funny. I wasn't even going to go into this, but he's claiming, shoot, I don't want to disparage anybody in case. He, well, what? I don't care. I don't know the guy. And he's he, like seventy. He's not listening to you. But he he claims now that he can't taste wine correctly ever since the crash. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I mean, every I think the whole idea, everyone kind of sees it as. Oh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. It's I'm gonna sue her. Yes, and so I, yeah, that's the only reason I know about it. It's all over. It's in the news, it, and mm-hmm. everyone's talking about it. But anyway, they, every time they show a clip of her, she's wearing like these gigantic oh, glasses. Like the but then it's, but then it's a no. They're like you know seeing eyeglasses. Oh, but they're tiny little fr- wire frames. Mm-hmm. And what I was getting at is those glasses that I have. They're like these thicker black mm-hmm. kind of frames. And I feel like it gets in the like I I can see it, you know. It kind of like mm-hmm. distracts me when I'm trying to draw. So why don't you get a, a, some monocles, double them up? <laughs> well, I am gonna go in for an eye check. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, well, did you schedule an appointment? Because we're out of here. No, no, no. I I I didn't get one. I said I will soon. Oh, well, okay. I'm saying I will okay. soon because I definitely need to. Um. But yeah, as of right now, I'm I'm I, I I'm fine, but it's definitely a little blurry. Uh, oh, I got a text today from an old friend, a guy that I used to produce a TV show f- with. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wow. the MMA show. Oh, okay. <laughs> the yeah, we used to produce. Yeah, the- I saw. I posted something for the first time in forever. And yes, liked it. And that's, so that's how I was like, oh, that's weird. I haven't seen your name for. In- well, that's forever. what the text was about. Yeah, how funny. <laughs> so Adrian never uses her social, her personal social media. But she did post a picture of our last visit uh, volunteering at the Skate Laborious Church in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And so the text this morning that came in, because I haven't heard from him either, he said, did you guys buy a church? Oh, <laughs> no. And then it went, and then we've been texting back and forth for a while because he buys, he he's an agent. I believe this is still what he does, but he's an agent for MMA fighters in Vegas, mm-hmm. like big time fighters. Uh, uh, but he also is doing real estate, buying buying homes and sell and flipping them and selling them. Uh, so anyway, long story short, he hmm, tell him to get some interesting MMA guys on our show. Well, I was going to ask him about that, but I don't know. You know, MMA guys sometimes aren't very interesting. I don't know. Everyone don't likes John Cena. Kick. Well, he's not. Well, he's not MMA. He's, he's a wrestler. A wrestler. You look at his ears, right? Right, but he's a well, but he's like a he's a wrestling performer. He understands the importance of charisma and personality Don't and all MMA fighters. No, some. no, huh? their, their charisma. Uh, listen, uh, d- don't get me in an arm bar after this statement. <laughs> anyone. I actually have a fighting name, an MMA fighting name. If you go to one of those MMA you do accounts. Okay. So this is funny. 
So if you go to one of those like MMA fighter accounts and, or, you know, online, you can look up any fighter in any of their fights and it tells you their record and their, their stats. Mm -hmm. So you can find my name under the Simone Teddy. Is that like Fuck, the, the lingerie? The person that we're talking about, mm -hmm. Rob, mm -hmm. when we were, when we were producing that TV show, he thought it would be fun. He made a oh, he made a thing for me. Teddy <laughs> so, bear or like lingerie Teddy? No, well, either way, the Simone <laughs> Teddy was my fighter name. <laughs> so listen, watch out. My record on there is is uh, zeros because so I fucking dominated so many people. But see, this is what MMA. That's their charisma is. It's like this uh, machismo. All they want to do is be like, yeah, or they can't like have fun. Not all of them. But a lot of them, when they're in their discussions, yeah. it's always about, oh, I could, I'll fuck you up. Because that's what they're trying to do is intimidate each other. They and, do love MMA, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were, I mean. I'm not on the TV. I don't care about it on TV. But I loved going to the live fights. Yeah. And for anyone that doesn't know, yeah, we uh, I produced a TV show with this guy, Rob. He hired me uh, to help him turn this TV show into a boring show into like an MTV exciting event. And that's what I did. And I've, mm -hmm. I, I'm proud of that. I did Back definitely did early that. 2000. Yeah. Way late early 80s, on. Late 90s, early 2000s. Right? Yeah. And it was a couch. It was a, it's one of the only kind. It was, um, a, a show where you would just get people from regular life, regular people, and they'd come in the ring and, and fight. Mm -hmm. There were some good fights. There were a lot of really good people fights. Know moved up right didn't um yeah. josh berkman Berk josh berkman yeah that he went and he went uh and fought in the ufc yeah several several people went from from there to go fight in the in the ufc so <laughs> so yeah i have a it's funny if you go back and watch some of these shows the, the amount the amount of things that we had our hands in it's pretty wild because someone yes on the episode with um i was in one of the commercials oh that's right i'm gonna play that commercial <laughs> right now you want to look tough and feel tough? Well, you can with Utah's number one fight gear. Don't act tough. Look tough. Don't get pushed around by imposters. Want some? Yep. Get some. Adrian's. I'm going to play a few of those commercials. Here's some commercials from that from that, that uh, fight show. That was fun. That we used to produce. With pre-children. This is what happens when your boss gets a hold of the toughest gear in town. Steven, this is the tenth time I've been in your office for the same problem. These TPS reports have no cover sheets. Do it again. I don't think he knows who I am. Be careful who you boss around. Yeah, and we and there was a show. So the fights happened every weekend, every weekend. So we were we were doing like fifty two episodes a season. It was crazy, and they were fun. Like people from all over the state would come out, and it was always at a bar. Like it wasn't like bar fighting, but the shows happened in the you know we'd set up the ring in in bars, and it was really it was really the first of its kind. And I loved Razor Sharp, and who was the other guy that I really loved? Uh, Densley, Robert Densley. Yeah. Somewhere in the depths of a wrecking yard. Oh my gosh, it's Robert the Wrecker! Yeah! Woo! Woo! All right, we're here at the home of Robert the Wrecker, Densley. Robert, tell me about your new gear. Well, it's the toughest gear in town, so if you don't want to get wrecked, come pick up Utah's number one fight gear. Don't get wrecked. The two guys that, that beat Johnny. Oh, sorry, Johnny. <laughs> I love Johnny more, but I really like those guys. I think I went to school with one of them, or not. Uh, maybe. Well, yeah, Johnny, and speaking of Johnny, Johnny Ritchie was one of our past guests and a really close friend of mine. Um, maybe I'll throw in a little clip of him fighting and then throw in the clip of the two guys that you like, the, two guys, the only two guys that beat him <laughs> in the ring. Um, oh, I got, what were we, what were we saying? I got a little sidetracked there. I'm just drinking coffee. I will probably be sniveling a, a little bit. I have never done cocaine in my life, okay. and I just did some. No, just kidding. Cocaina. No, but I don't want anyone to think that. But I we're in our <laughs> thinks you're just doing cocaine. Oh. We're in like a perpetual winter in Utah. Just well, doesn't stop snowing. Well, my sniffling's not coming from that. It's so dry in Utah that when we come back to Utah, my nose gets really dry in here. I'm like not to be gross, but it's kind of scabbed up a bit. So I put some um, what's it called? That stuff we shea use? butter. Shea butter. 
in 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 there a little bit to help uh that's worked before so it's a little it's like i've got my nose a little runny and i did just drink some coffee and i'm i'm flying off the rails i'm looking forward to our guest today uh <laughs> now i'm laughing because i just said that and all of a sudden my nose really started to feel like uh running oh i built i wanted to do a quick song shares before every episode i don't have many i only have one song share i wanted to do mm, right do now. i get to do that too sure yeah i think you should because i because it's cool but i might steal yours here my song share is from this uh the my, de niro ferrar my new boyfriend de niro yeah, that's an Adrian's new favorite, De Niro Ferrar. But it's this the song Sins. We watched it last night after Barfly's episode. And uh yeah, it's a cool it's a really cool song. Something just ain't right about this crazy world. I'm meditating and elevating with baby girl. They say I ain't got no rights because I'm black or do I? Original man, bitch, I'm strong as Kunta. Illuminati want my soul and my body. Took the shackles off my brain and loaded up my shoddy. Illuminati want my soul in my body But I took the shackles off my brain Holy playing folk Chaotic be conceived Born black into this world Made it hard for me to breathe Worshipping false gods Had me down on my knees Till I found liberation Now a nigga found it free The song I really like with him Is with Machine Not Machine Gun Machine Drum Machine Drum So go check out those two songs Oh, what was I going to say about Barfly before I got sidetracked about the Barfly episode? Oh, you know what? Mm -mm. So speaking of the Barfly episode, I'm getting pretty far in his book, Winding Up Strangers and Bars. Go get your hands on that. You, I'm telling you, this book is just phenomenal. Um, It's, or, you know, I really dig it. Oh, you know who else sent me a book as a gift? I think it's a gift because I didn't order it from him. Is this book. Oh, yeah, yeah. That came from um, B. Dolan sent that. And I just, I wore uh, uh, a, a shirt that he sent as well, a long sleeve shirt on that episode with um, abilities. That's the shirt I was wearing from B. Dolan. But yeah, he sent me that. That was cool. Ooh. But anyway, um, in this book, Winding Up Strangers, the character likes to get people wound up. It's like he, he feeds off of it. The other night we went out uh, with our friend Johnny, who we were just talking about. And he was telling us about this girl. He was telling us there's this thing called like doom. People love to watch the planet just fucking implode. Like people just get a kick out of it for some weird reason. And he was saying that there's this girl on some like TikTok or something. And what she does is she cakes a bunch of lipstick on her lips and then she'll go oh. to like clubs and, and they'll someone off to the side will kind of be filming her hidden, like hidden camera style. And she'll go and like, while someone's dancing, she'll go and like kiss the, their back of their shirt or something yeah. without them noticing or like kiss the, their neck without them kind of noticing. So when they go home to their it's significant awful. others or whatever, they've got lipstick on their collars and like, yeah, it's fucking awful. And that, what you know, what's even more psychotic about it is that person, she doesn't ever see that result, but she gets such a kick out of it that, she doesn't care. I just, it was weird. I don't know. I don't know why people were like that. Do you like that? I'd rather see, I'm, I'm much more happy when everyone's in a good mood. <laughs> I am normally oblivious to a lot of things happening around me. So. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Let's talk about our guest real quick. Unless you had something that you wanted to, to mention. I don't think so. Well, as I said, I'm really looking forward to our guest today. Uh, it's Greg Crayola Simpkins. Uh, he was the guest juror on, um, there's a show called the surreal salon in the Baton Rouge gallery in Baton Rouge. Um, they do it once a year. It's a really cool show. And and what they do is they have a guest juror and they select all this, uh, surreal surrealist artworks to show at this, uh, gallery. And then they have a big party in October and we went once. So, uh, Crayola, Juror, was a juror on this show and he I actually applied to that it was the first time I ever applied to that to be a get to have a piece of my work and uh, he selected one of my pieces he we don't know each other never met he, he didn't know who I am but this was what how long ago was that six seven years ago eight years ago oh well yeah I guess it could have been five years ago with the pandemic it was I think of 2020 
No, that was when I won. Twenty nineteen. That this he didn't jury the year I won. So I think it was maybe oh, really? eight eight years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Did we go to that one? Mm, yeah, that was the one we went to. The that one, wasn't that one. The piece I submitted was um, the Mystic, the Mystic Sushi Master. Well, it was pre-pandemic. We'll just say that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, the only reason I applied is because I had noticed. Well, I've I've seen the show before, and the winner of the show gets a f- uh, featured article in Juxtapose Magazine. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I have never been in juxtapose magazine prior, prior to this uh um i mean people believe that i have they get like i'll run into people and they're like i have seen your work in juxtapose and i'm like no you actually haven't <laughs> but um yeah i've always wanted to be in juxtapose so anyway the winner of the show gets to uh gets a feature in juxtapose so that um she's sorry let me slow my brain down crayola was a juror on that i got in I applied. I only figured I could get in because I was a fan of Crayola's work. And I thought, you know what? He's probably going to get where my style comes from because a lot of jurors at a lot of shows that we do, they don't get my work. They're like art professors. And yeah. Yeah. They don't understand my work at all. So, yeah, that was the first time I got into that show. And then we drove to Baton Rouge to go to the party. And it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Did and we uh, switch out some art in that hotel room. Yeah. Uh, like we took. Did we do that and take the art apart and then put some of your yeah. pieces in the hotel room? Yeah, I can't remember. Someone told me about it, and I only did it a few times. I can't remember if it was an idea that I had, but we instead, so I wouldn't get you know you wouldn't get charged when you stay at a, a hotel. You would get charged if you like damaged everything and painted the walls and stuff. So we would take the print out of a frame that's in the bathrooms or somewhere and put in one of my pieces, and usually. Um, maids they don't they're, they're the only ones that go into the room so they don't notice so uh, yeah we did that to a place in new mexico and another place but not at that place uh anyway i uh i want to thank um crayola for oh, selecting yeah for selecting that piece to be part of that exhibit because we went to the show and had a great time i then applied to that uh surreal salon show um continuously every year after that and i got in one other time and then I didn't get in. And then last year, I got in with my Last Suffer piece. And uh, the judge, the juror of that show is um, was, uh, well, shoot, shoot, I'm going to forget her name. Damn it. No forward. There you go. Okay, yeah. And But anyway, she selected my piece for the show. And uh, I ended up winning the show. And so I got a feature in Juxtapose Magazine. I'm not satisfied with that feature still. I still feel like I should be in there more. But oh, well. Because that was, I only got in because I won this show and it's an obligation to juxtapose to do it. But anyway, okay. Sorry, that was a long run up on that. No one cares. They only want to hear from Crayola. (laughs) Where's Crayola? Yeah, where's Crayola? (laughs) That was happening in our uh, episode of Barfly while we were talking. People in the live chat, people were like, where's Barfly? And it kind of got a... I started to be like, you guys, this is our show. Like, it's <laughs> we do a build up, we do an intro. It's our show, and then we have the guest on. So, I after so many of them, I finally just said, we have, we have him locked in a in a in a case in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Crayola will be on in just a moment. Now I'm going to build up things that I appreciate of Crayola's, or just things about him, real quick. Uh, he loves. Uh, he's a big fan of Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Do you know who that is? Um. Okay. Well, we'll get into that a little later. That was like the f- first Mickey, but not Mickey. Oh, right. Um, he's a big fan of Watership Down, which is a book that he read, but I've only seen the cartoon. Big fan of Chronicles Narnia. Speaking of of the book, we've had a guest on the show who did the uh, who won an Oscar for doing the special effects makeups for Chronicles of Narnia movie. He was an artist on the uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two video game. Um. Let me tell you three pieces that I love of his, though he's got many. Uh, okay. Piper's Pass is an amazing piece. Good Night. I think that's probably one of my one of my favorites of his. And I Ain't Afraid. Um, great pieces. But again, I am only telling you those three pieces so that if you're interested, if, you, if you're unaware of his work, which would be a surprise to me, but people like that do exist, mm-hmm. go look up those pieces and you'll just go, immediately go like, oh, yeah, I want to see more. 
Um, he, I'm pretty sure he did a label for Hob Sauce, and I bring that up because obviously we have. Yeah. I have got a label on you. Hob Sauce. Not me. Um, he's got this. This is he's got his own limited edition brush set. Oh no! Uh, a Halloween brush. There's a oh, Halloween cool. brush set. Yeah, as an artist, like if you if people are making brushes with your name on it, yeah, they forget like about a, it. It's <laughs> a makeup <laughs> deal for actresses. Yes, that's a big deal. Uh, he's got his own Iron Lack Striker sketchbook set. Uh, so are we, is he here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. So listen, Iron Lack is is a big deal. We used Iron Lack when they first came out. Back when it was the sticky. Well, it's changed, and we didn't really know what we were how to use it. I learned later. As when it, as Weird sticky. Chief, my moniker Weird Chief, a lot of people. People know our work. What did you just say? I said like Snoop says sticky icky. Sticky icky. Uh, anyway, we used to use Iron Lack all the time uh, back when we did the Weird Chief's pop art stencil work. Uh, he's got his book, Drawn to the Well. It's an incredible book. We're in our Utah studio, not in our Hannibal studio, because I have that book, but that book is in the Hannibal studio. Otherwise, I'd be holding it up right now to show how proud I am of, to own that book. It's a great, it's awesome. It's uh, inspiring imagery in there. Um, he does have others, other books available, but they're all sold out, so they're not available. Um, he's got he they. There's a movie called I'm Scared. It's a short stop motion movie based on his artwork, hmm. and it, I watched it last night. It's awesome. Uh, it's terrific. Sorry, not yeah. awesome. <laughs> I was gonna say that. Uh, and when you look, I mean, it's loaded up with film festival laurels. Like it's a, it's a, it's a. Cool. Yeah, I was I was hoping you were gonna ask what's a film what's a film festival laurel, but you know what laurels are. Well, I do know someone named Laurel. Oh, well, they're the wreath, the wreaths, you know, the film festival wreaths. Oh, the like the Greek. Yeah, the those are thing. called the film festival laurels. Now, obviously, he's got c- artwork on the cover of I- my mom again. I know. Sorry. I'm only saying now. Yeah, it's, I'm not challenging. <laughs> he's got uh, art on the cover of High Fructose Magazine, Juxtapose Magazine, What's Bliss. Fructose? <laughs> it's a sugar. It is a sugar. Because <laughs> just kidding. Go on. Sorry, he's here. We yeah. Should. Okay. Yeah. So he's got it. artwork on all the covers of those. Uh, his list of achievement achievements and and accomplishments are are astonishing and and rightfully so because he's a, a an incredible artist and um and we're lucky to have him on. Uh, one last thing, his exhibition, the Escape Artist at KP Projects in in California, is like an astonishing collection of artwork. So uh, that was in I believe 2017. Anyway. We'll take a quick break. I uh, thanks for watching the show, and uh, we'll be right back with Crayola Red. Stop what you're doing. Listen. forty five. Hob Sauce. We're real thrilled to have partnered with Hob Sauce for three simple reasons. Their hot sauce is delicious, the owner and creator David is a solid dude, and they collaborate with dope artists for their labels, including myself. Boom. Amplify your favorite foods with their award-winning flavors. Head over to HobSauces.com to get yourself some absolutely delicious artisan hot sauce. Hit it, Bobby. Hab Sauce, Hab Sauce. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Put it on your food. Hot sauce. This is flyover country. No one's expecting much from us. In fact, no one's expecting anything at all. The coast probably think we're at Walmart right now. Where you doing on fire, by the way? <laughs> Instead, here we are making plans. Big plans. Because in a city where people do so much with so little, what could happen if we gave them more? More beauty, connections, perspectives. This is your chance to be a part of something bigger than itself. Something that's made of brick, concrete, and steel. But also for blood, sweat, and soul. Something that can only be possible in St. Louis. Because when no one's expecting much from you, you can do anything. Our city deserves something epic. Long live laborious. Check out our new partners, Brim of the World, a.k.a. Sea Conquer and Destroy, a.k.a. Aliens Built Earth. Show them some love and treat yourself right to a new wardrobe or some new headgear. And I'm not talking about braces headgear, I'm talking about hats. Check out all their gear and links at brimoftheworld.com. 
Hey, real quick, my friends, my art is available for purchase at artbytai.com. So if you like what you're seeing or you want to support the DOD 45 show, the best way for you to do that is to pick up a print or an original at my website. If you're not quite ready to buy, but you still want to help out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you stream from. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Art by Ty and engage in the comments. That goes a long way. All right, enough already. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back. Hey, hello. Hey, uh, sorry to keep you waiting there. I was going through on our intro. I, uh, we record an intro before we have a guest in, and I was doing a build up. Okay. But when you have credits like yours, that takes a little while. <laughs> <laughs> You're too nice. <laughs> well, too nice. yeah, no, it, it really, that's what I was like. I, we saw that you were in the room, and I was like, well, let me get, let me, let me mention this. I want to mention this. I, I want to mention this. One of the one things that I wanted to mention that I didn't. Uh, that I noticed last night when I was kind of just going through notes was the movie I'm Scared. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic, man. Uh, like someone making a movie based on your artwork is, is that's pretty significant. Yeah, my team, it, I, I give them all the credit, man. It, it, like, I remember when we sat down and first pitched the idea, I was with my buddy Dan Levy. He's like, hey, bring some stories. I got this guy, Pete Levin. He's an amazing director for stop motion. Let's let's pitch some of your stories. And I, I read him a bunch of my stories. And like, oh, that's so depressing. That's so depressing. I'm like, oh, man, well, I do have this story that I used to, I made up for my, my, my son you know, to put him to bed at night and it was all I'm scared. And maybe I'd start like half the poem, I'm scared of the monster who climbs down the stairs and then he'd make up another part. So like that whole part in the movie, like the shark with the dark lifeless eyes or whatever, yeah. and when the shark swing around, that's my son coming up with that. And then eventually I had another kid and we just turned it into bad advice from big brothers to little brothers. So he's like, you should be scared at night when you go to bed was the whole joke behind it all. Well, it, so. it's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, cool is not even a. You a should strong be enough. scared. Is that what you said? You should be scared when you go yeah, to <laughs> Yeah, because it's just kind of funny. Because that's even kind of the, their dynamic now. They're five years apart, so my older kids always trying to scare my younger kids. So <laughs> I'm like, well, we kind of predicted this one. <laughs> so, well, thanks for joining us on the show. We really appreciate it. It's 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 an honor to have you here, and. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing this drawing for you. I'm, I'm kind of basing it off of your style a little bit. Um, and we'll awesome. See, we'll see where we end up. Uh, before I start this 45-minute timer to get you uh, to get going on it, I do want to ask, I had this question that I wanted to ask you, but um, w when you're being interviewed by, by people like a, a magazine or whatever, what do you find yeah. people seem to be most interested about when they're talking to you what, what do you feel like, like the usually, interviewer yeah what's the what's the most the, usually where the interviewer is trying to go that's a good question a lot of times they ask me where i started and all that kind of stuff that's yeah. pretty common and then where do the ideas come from which is very tough i you know i'll talk about my influences obviously growing up like books and cartoons and and then graffiti and tattoos and all that kind of stuff is kind of where a lot of my influence came from. But I guess influence in history, people ask a lot and just, and just why I paint the weird shit that I paint. So, and and that gets tough to answer. Yeah, yeah. it does. I, I was. Gonna, do you think that that's like just such a standard default question? Like, what are your what are your influences? Oh yeah, you you're an artist, so you know it. I, like, uh, it's they, my it's my least favorite question from anybody. <laughs> same because it's just like uh, i don't know like i don't really think about it to be honest i, I sit down with the sketchbook i'm in my head and, and just having it's like watching a movie it's like you, you get in that that zone where you're tuned out and it's just like okay i'm in my zone and nothing else can bother me it's been like that since i was like four years old if you put a yeah. sketchbook or a coloring book in front of me i'm drawing i'm drawing outside the lines i'm making up my own stuff to add to it and it's just like i'm gone it feels like almost like a daydream state. Yeah. And so it's, it stays that way. 
And and yeah, and it's not like it's a case of like nobody influenced you, but but it's all happening subconsciously. It's not like you're sitting there, you know. Well, shoot, yeah, I don't well, know. I just tell it's people like, it's, I'm I'm an observer. It's I like observe. when you're. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like when you're talking to somebody on the phone back in the old days when you actually had the phone, you had to hold still in one place and you just start drawing, and you don't yeah. even think about what you're drawing. You're just drawing. And exactly. I think, every, I, I, I think everybody's had that experience. I mean, I still have that experience. I still yep. do that kind of stuff. It's going to be hard for me not to sit here and draw right well, now. You should. <laughs> you should. Draw along. Hey, feel, feel free to. <laughs> I do go along. No, I'll, 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 I'll stay focused. Well, but, that's yeah. that. Yeah, the only the thing for me why I started doing this was I, 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 I'm able to concentrate only when I'm drawing. So I can only, actually only have conversations with people while I'm drawing. Um, right. just like just like what Adrian was saying, that's kind of how the idea of the show came up. Was you know, like she's saying, you know, you're talking on the phone, you're doodling, you're never looking at what you're doodling, you're just talking on the phone. And after you get off the phone, you know, like your yellow pages have like was full of like just these really yep. awesome kind of doodles. So yeah, right. All right. And then later on, they become something bigger. You can just expand yeah. upon it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My timer died, Adrian. Can you? Say oh, it? yeah, I got it. <laughs> Timer set, and I start off with a few little ones to get me to get uh, us all comfortable with each other. So, uh, whose whose career would you rather see have a revival? Greg the Hammer Valentine or Greg Kinnear? Oh man, gosh, that's tough. I mean, I liked Greg Kinnear when he was on Talk Soup or The Soup on E. I remember when he came around like that. But uh, I guess, isn't Greg the Hammer Valentine from WWF? Yeah. Yeah, that's my childhood too. So I, I guess I don't really care. Maybe they both have a, maybe Greg Kinnear becomes a WWF wrestler and that just becomes a new career. That would be probably more interesting than anything. Yeah, I like Great. that Greg Kinnear. He had, a, I, he had a good talk show and I, he was in a <laughs> Jack Nicholson movie too, I think. Yeah, he was. I, I I remember his movies re very rarely. I just remember watching like when cable television came on. He had that talk show. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a he was a funny guy. Um, what are you a movie watcher? A little bit. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it's hard with that. That question too. Sometimes it go like when I get asked that, I'm like, well, I I am, but then don't start bringing up like some crazy movies that i've never heard like you got some obscure like french like yeah. weird <laughs> movies i don't know <laughs> well these ones might be obscure they're not too obscure but you might not know them but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter but here's the here's my question there's these two movies and i'm wondering which one uh you would rather watch um a simple okay. plan or a simple mind oh gosh a simple plan the movie yeah. I don't know. I know the band, but I don't know the movie. I mean, I know of the band. I think they named themselves after the movie. And A Simple Mind, is that with Russell Crowe? It is, yeah. So Yeah, yeah, that movie. I like yeah, that movie. You got to go with that one. Yeah, Simple Plan. I thought it was A Beautiful Mind. Oh, you know what? Am I Shit, you're right. No, you're right. It is A Beautiful Mind. <laughs> Late night. Gotcha. Yeah. But it's beautiful. <laughs> but it's beautiful, mine. And then, well, what it was, and Simple Plan was uh, a movie with um, uh, the guy that plays Sling Blade. What's his name? Um, oh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, Billy Bob oh. Thornton and Bill Paxton. And a, yeah. crane, a, a plane crashes out in the middle of nowhere and it has million, like some $600,000 or something in it. And the, okay. char the characters find the money. And uh, then that, the whole the movie from there turns into a cluster fudge of oh that's right yeah because they're like make all the worst decisions you could do because I wanted to ask you say you came across a crashed plane with uh, tons of money in it what do you suppose your uh, your what would how would you what would you be your move what would you do uh, man I know myself I probably find, try to find out who whose money it is and just get it back to them yeah. That's I pretty much would do that. Yeah, and I think it was actually maybe a several million because yeah, I, the, there's a great quote. I don't even think it's from that movie, but uh, someone says no one's no one 
just forgets about a million dollars missing. So and people find out they come after you too. Yeah, it does bring you more problems. Yeah, and that's what the movie yeah. is about. <laughs> and I think that dad too, if I was positioning that question to my kids, I know I would say now the right thing to do would be to give the money back to whoever's money it was. So I know that I'd have to go that direction. Which which would you rather be hired to make concept art for? The Lion King or King Kong? Probably the Lion King. That's weird. I, most people probably say King Kong, unless it's the King Kong with all the dinosaurs in it, which I thought was kind of rad because I like all the dinosaur parts. But Lion King's got a lot of rad animals in it. So I'd love to draw the hyenas. Oh, yeah. Kind of get that. Yeah, and, you, uh, you enjoy creating, you enjoy doing the animals, right? Yeah, I'm more of a creature person than anything. Like, I'll draw people and paint people too. That's fun. But I really, you know, enjoy creatures way more. Always have. Is it a case of it gives you a little more freedom to just to um, uh, turn it into whatever you want? Probably there's a bit of that. And there's also, like, I just think they're more interesting. I mean, there's plenty of people out there painting portraits. I'm like, I'll let them keep doing that because it's just more fun to sit down and and get all weird with some animals than to like, okay, this person has to look like this person. Now, if they don't, it's it's like you could just tell. And I just say, it's not like I'm scared to draw people. I, I, like I've drawn plenty of people and painted plenty of people. And then people always ask me, I think you or ask me, why don't you paint more people? I'll read sometimes I'll read my comment <laughs> sections and it's like, why don't you paint more people? I think you should. I'm like, well, that's great. If you think that, why don't you go paint some people? Yeah. And I'm going to be painting these dumb bunnies. Well, <laughs> and I have the same. I get asked. I don't know how to articulate my answer. I've never been able to, but I get asked by a lot of people. Why, why don't you draw people? And I my deep what I am thinking in my head is I'm like, drawing humans is boring. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's boring to me. <laughs> I mean, not to say yeah. that anyone else is doing it, but I don't know why I don't. I've never liked it, but yeah, I don't have a an answer to that. There are people who do people, and they do them very well. Yeah, and they love to do them. So, if you need a people, a person, go to an artist. Who does I always them. like to just come back with why and how did you come to that conclusion that I should be painting people? Like, why are you trying to speak into my life on what I should be painting? Yeah, it's just that's, like that's a good move. Throwing it back on them, like I'm going to try yeah. that. I'm I'm very uncomfortable. Or you can always just say. I've made it this far without doing what you tell me to do. So should I call you for advice in the future on future projects? Like, well, it's... that's going on in my head. Yeah, do you say that in your head yeah. or do you say that Because I can't loud? do it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I probably said it like to a couple people out loud if they got really obnoxious, but oh. I'll definitely never comment that back. I just say thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> well, that leads me into this question. Do you get annoyed when people say uh, like when they – when they're saying what an artist is trying to say when they're talking about their paintings. Like, for example, we are watching with our kids um, some YouTube video about uh, Bosch's work, about Hieronymus Bosch. But they were, like, saying all these things about what the artist was saying with this and with this. Does that bother you at all? Is that annoying to you? A lot of times it is annoying because I know that wasn't what the artist was thinking. Like, and I've been thrown in those positions where I have to explain like to death my work and I'm like, well, you're, you're really taking the fun out of it. I don't, mm -hmm. sometimes it's personal. Sometimes you don't want to explain to everybody what's going on or how it connects to like 15 years worth of paintings that got you to that one painting that they're talking about. And, or it might just sound like some real nerdy D and D stuff that they don't want to really hear because they have this whole other idea of what you're doing. Yeah. And. And sometimes it's just like if some paintings, it's like, no, I just painted it because it was in my head, but they don't want to hear that either. So it's like, and then like when I hear an artist going on and on about the deep meaning behind their work, I'm like, I know you weren't thinking that. And I know you did this. <laughs> you saw this shadow on the ground. It looked like that. So you decided to draw it. And so it, it, it's more subconscious than you're trying to make it sound like you yeah. found out the meaning of life. So some of it, I have a couple friends that really go off on it. I'm like, that's bullshit. And I know it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I, now I'll just tell the people, I will just, I say, when they ask like, what does this mean? I'd say, you know what, what my, my meaning behind it is going to ruin what your feeling is for it. So just stay with yours because mine's probably not even going to equal anywhere near. <laughs> right. Um, do you, uh, are you a re you, you're a reader, right? You, do you enjoy reading? Yeah, I don't get to read as much as I used to, especially growing up. 
I'll do audio books these days. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like reading was a huge part of my upbringing and, and getting into even drawing and storytelling through art was through uh, reading. So do you, sure. do, but being a visual artist, do you prefer the book or the movie? <laughs> That's a good question. I guess I like both like, like, but recently I did a trip to go visit my parents and I just brought an old book. It was Tales from Watership Down, which was the sequel to Watership Down. And I just, ah, I just enjoyed sitting on the flight and reading. And I even just back in my hotel room, just reading. I'm like, wow, this is nice. This is, so you get so much more detail in a book and my brain just extrapolates out the imagery. So I don't have to see it to have the pictures in my head. Yeah. So Does that- I, I really enjoy reading. Is it a, is it hard for you? So I I can't read because I'm not able, you know, like as you say, you visualize all these things that are happening. But I'm not. I've never had the ability to like reel myself away from that wandering mind when I'm reading. So I don't even know what I'm. I, I'm two minutes into the reading. I don't even know what I'm reading anymore because I'm like <laughs> I'm living in some other world. Is, is that is it something you've always been able to do? Was like keep your mind on the page, but also uh visualize yeah. what you're reading yeah yeah def a hundred percent like i just i would read every night before bed um and it was just like a habit but i'd, I'd also have good books like if, right. if the book's not interesting then this what's the point but how do you know if the book's interesting until you start reading it also yeah i started off with like adventures of robin hood then all the c.s lewis stuff the narnia stuff um phantom toll booth and then I got Watership Down when I was 12, and that just changed everything. I'm like, wow, stories can be really dark but meaningful. And yeah, that was your you know, favorite, on- one of your favorite books, right? That Watership Down? Absolutely. Yeah, really good book. I highly recommend everybody reading it or getting the audiobook if you don't just listen to it while you're painting or drawing. I watched the, mo- I watched the movie last night, yeah. Which one did you watch? The, the cartoon? Yeah, the cartoon. So my, that cartoon, my mom put me in front of that when I was like five and she went to cook not knowing it wasn't just a movie about bunnies and they start ripping each other to shreds and it was like fields of blood and I was just like traumatized. But later I got the book when I was like 12. I'm like, oh, that's what that movie was about. Oh, I was so impactful. It's so good. That's why my, my logo is the Black Rabbit. It's based off the Black Rabbit of Inlay from Watership Down. It's a great story. And, and yeah, you're right. I was I watching that as a kid. Is- <laughs> But that's how all traumatized. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a lot darker even in the book. So, which I'm glad I've read. I mean, it, it, it's it's a story about, you know, you know, facing your fears and coming up on top, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's a, a good, really good story. It's a hero's journey. Like all favorite stories are a hero's journey in that development through that. So, yeah. Well, here's a question. Here's a Sophie's choice for you. Fiverr from Watership Down or Frank from Donnie Darko? Oh, definitely Fiverr. I mean, I love Frank. I love Donnie Darko. They even talk about Watership Down and Donnie Darko. I remember when it, the movie came out, I was so aggro on seeing it and so hundred all in, and it and it didn't disappoint. It was great. But yeah, Fiverr, like he 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 saves the day. See, kind of saves the day in the book. If you really think about his, the spookiness of his character, now he foresees like the fields of blood and like gets the rabbits on the journey because he can like foresee the future it's because of him that that saved him right yeah so he's like the little guy who even ends up saving all the rabbits right is 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 oswald a mouse or is mickey a rabbit (laughs) (laughs) yeah oswald is a rabbit mickey's the mouse i guess there but the only yeah, difference I, is the ears. <laughs> it's the ears. It's the ears. It's like the whole story of Walt Disney coming up with Mickey Mouse. They, they're, like, it's like they're making it all intense, intense. It's like, oh, you just changed the ears. You know? It, <laughs> it's like, wow. And he took over the world. It sucks because, like, also got asked out. Like, he's like the illegitimate older stepbrother who kind of just sat in the, in, sat by and just got drunk watching uh mickey become all famous <laughs> that's exactly right that is what happened to him <laughs> yeah i feel bad for him. yeah i, I was good to say because you have you have like a, a bunch of figurines and stuff right so he's had yeah. a, he's had like a a revival of sorts i yeah. guess maybe a cult following a cult following i took it on myself years ago to start spray painting him on walls when i do graffiti so i've spray painted him on a ton of walls like all over long beach and in LA just to uh you know 
Like, I think Oswald's a little more interesting. Not more interesting than Mickey. Mickey's great, whatever. But Oswald, is, there'd be no Mickey without Oswald. Right. So yeah. he, he kind of deserves the historical, like, comeuppance. So I just always paint him. I, he's fun to draw and paint. I'm tattooed on me also. Do you so, do a lot of graffiti still? Uh, yeah, I've been not not as much still. I mean, I painted a wall a few months ago at Channel Street Skate Park here in San Pedro. But um, yeah, I've been spray painting walls since 1992. So I've been involved in graffiti. I've been like some of the biggest graffiti crews in the world, like CBS, WAI, and Lord's Crew and Bashers Crew. How excited? How exciting was that? Um, uh, CBS crew showing up on, on in a Jeopardy question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was unexpected. I mean, I'd seen the documentary when they first premiered it four or five years ago, maybe longer. And it's, we've been sitting waiting like, when are you going to put it out? When's it going to be on Netflix? Now it's on Amazon Prime, which is right. So anybody who wants to watch Can't Be Stopped, the movie, my buddy Bleak um, directed it. And it covers like the history of the CBS crew um, from like 86 till up until like a few years ago. Graffiti was the voice of the dissatisfied soul. It wasn't only about running out and doing it and giving the public a free show. Yeah, well, I just got out of prison from doing four years. CBS would risk arrest and even death to make their mark on the streets of L.A. Driven by artistic expression mixed with rebellious mentality, CBS would influence generations of musicians, clothing brands, and artists. Forged by a larger-than-life leader, bonded by three letters. CBS. So it, you, people can get a sense of where like Hollywood graffiti really started and like all, you know, I, I came in later. I got in the crew in 97 is when I got put in or 98. I got in WAI 97, CBS 98. And I've been in that crew since. But it, it's really watching the history opened my eyes too. Like those guys were badasses. You know, we all looked up to them back then because they've been around since, you know, before I started in like 92. So watching that crew made me want to get into graffiti and, and be better at art because those guys were badasses, but they were really good at what they did too. So meeting them and being around them made me want to be better. So I, like I always say, graffiti was my art school. Even though I went to art school, I learned more from my graffiti friends. And they taught me, and you had to do it under pressure. And <laughs> yeah, it was a lot more nerve wracking than going to school. I remember going to Long Beach and I was just like, I was out all night spray painting freeway shit and then show up to school the United States covered in paint. Like, where's your project? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, here, I'll just draw something. My project is over there on I-15. Yeah, go look off the, <laughs> off the 405. Just go under that bridge right there. It's right there. When when you coming from a, a graffiti background and then going into art school, did you ever get a sense? Did you get like, um, did you sense that uh, that a little bit of side eye from uh, some of them? Uh, you know, art school. I don't have a good word for that. You know, there sometimes is that. Sometimes that you know early on that lowbrow was looked yeah, down. Yeah, a lot of people on. didn't know what. Yeah, it was low, a lot of it was looked down on. Like, it's not. A, it didn't become all popular until years later. Like back then, we were looking like definitely looked down on. It's like I mean, we were. All, I was like a, a punk skater, graffiti artist. I didn't like. I know some of my teachers were pissed at me because I, I, you know, especially in college, I wouldn't even show up, but I'd show up with a, the project at the end and they'd be like, oh, I can't give you a bad grade. It looks good. Because I was always doing art. Even if I wasn't there, I was doing art. I was doing art for all the bands in the neighborhood. I was doing my own graffiti stuff. I was constantly immersed in it. There was never a day I'm not doing it, but just wasn't, I didn't care for the structure of school so much. Yeah. Which is weird because I just got hit up by Long Beach State. They wanted to, Put me on like their their whatever screens and stuff during games like oh an alumni from long beach state and i'm like <laughs> i learned more i'm saying all this out in the world that even that they watch it I, I don't know i always talk shit about school so sure i don't care <laughs> well that, yeah i'd be remiss if i didn't ask you this um i get asked from a lot of younger artists too that are like wondering like well what's the why go to art school i didn't go to art school because it, that I was the structure school structure was so overwhelming to me that i just i couldn't but i always tell them i say i kind of wish i did because my battle with um 
figuring out oil paints was probably way harder than it needed to be if I would have went to school. Uh, oh, way, man. Really? Well, I, I, well yeah, I, I, I don't know color. Like, th this drives artists fucking crazy, but I don't know color theory. I don't, I couldn't tell you what's on a, I couldn't tell you primary colors. I'll see what, what works together and I just go, that works. But so it drives right. artists crazy when I say that, but I really don't know it at all. But I, I think that I would have, I could have benefited from learning that. So what I, my, my long form question to you was, would you tell someone to go to, to art school? These days, I don't know. It depends on what their personality is already. Cause I didn't learn to paint in art school. I learned like, you know, some color theory in like design classes, like through color pencils and marker renderings. I learned how to paint through spray paint and then later picking up acrylics on my own. I took a watercolor class. I guess that's painting that that counted too. But I feel like I learned more from like just picking up a book. Like James Gurney has a great book called Color and Light, which helped a lot. And then um, just, gosh, later in life, I mean, now kids can learn everything on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Like honestly, back then I would have said, yeah, maybe go to art school. But now it's like you can literally look everything up on YouTube. You could learn how to oil paint from YouTube. You could learn how to color theory through YouTube, everything. It's so funny. Like, if you want to learn something, you can learn it now. Yeah, That's what I was is. saying. No oil paints. I didn't, I, I, I took half a year of oil painting and was over it and just mm. got into a different class. I learned more through life drawing than anything in college just because, you know, proportioning and scaling and all that. I felt that was the most beneficial. Well, yeah. So, and I, yeah, when I was growing up, I remember, I mean, I remember, you know, when I got to the age where I was like ne needed to start finding a job, I'd go through the paper, the, the ads. I mean, I don't think anyone knows what those are anymore. Remember, you'd go through the class or what were they called? Like, look for a job in the paper. But I, <laughs> yeah. it was always like these, I always was looking for some sort of art jobs. We were in Utah, so we didn't get that many jobs okay. like that. But it was always, um, you had to have a, you know, a bachelor's degree in art to be a graphic designer. Do you think is that still the case? But now kids just learn how to do graphic design in, junior, in, in high school. elementary school. <laughs> right. That's a good question. Like, I remember it like so I graduated college in like 98. And then um, I went straight. It took me a while to get through school just because I was missing much. But I, I graduated high school in 93. And then when I graduated through the art, I got a studio art bachelor's degree. And I went straight into design work for uh jinko jeans which was a clothing oh company. my god <laughs> yeah you remember those i Thank wore you. them all the time yeah i was doing t-shirt graphics for them i wasn't doing anything it had nothing to do with the pants or nothing like that and all my friends in the graffiti world like these big dudes were working there so i got to sit with them every day and i got to learn from them i learned how to use computers through my art directors there and it was it was a really good learning process the, I, did, I hated working there it just the management sucked but it, it, it got, I, I coming in with a degree helped because they looked at it, but nobody else had that degree that worked there. It didn't really, it didn't really matter. It just, you had to be good. It, it's all portfolio driven. And then when I got hired at uh, Treyarch Activision from there, right after that, a bunch of my friends are working there. I got hired to work on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. I just showed up with a portfolio, a fat portfolio from graffiti to all my illustration work and everything I'd done for all these bands. It was just like, Everything I'd done up to then, I just showed up and dropped it on the desk. And he's like, you're hired. Can you use a computer? I'm like, yeah, I know. Photoshop and Illustrator. And they're like, well, we need you to learn that some of the 3D programs. So they sat and they crash coursed me on 3D Studio Max. And I learned so much in such a small amount of time. But I always focus on anything I'm working on. Yeah. I go 100% in. And I figured everything out. And I was there for like five or six years. Wow. Working on like Spider-Man games, Tony Hawk game, uh, Kelly Slater Pro Surfer snowboarding game that never came out just like it was, it was a really good learning um place too well, do most companies will most companies like like you said they gave you that time to figure out how to do it is do they benefit yeah. more from just showing just the they can wait a little bit for you to figure it out or do yeah. they want to do they want to grab an artist it was a unique time for that company because it was right before they got bought by Activision and they were independent and they were building their roster and if they saw talent, they wanted to grab it and nurture it and make them part right. of the team. And yeah. They were really good at that. I wasn't the only one they grabbed. They grabbed some other guys that they really brought up and taught who are doing great now too. It was just a really good 
program they, they saw like wow you're really creative you got some you, and also i knew graffiti and they're trying to put all the graffiti in the game and make it look right in the game i'm like well i can do that for one that's easy yeah. i actually put stuff spray painted in venice beach right back on the same walls we spray painted in the video game Oh, awesome. so, <laughs> which was a really fun little Easter egg for my friends because they'd be like, hey, he actually painted that there. I'm like, yep. And then, I, so, so I was going to ask, is that what you did a lot of like the back, the background art within the games, like mur murals and things or? OK, yeah, that and I was a texture artist. So like it gave me the wireframe, say, for like a, if it's Spider-Man, like a building, I would make the bricks, the tiles, the windows, wow. the signage interiors like a jewelry store make it look like a jewelry store like and it was funny there's even a picture of a couple dancing at their wedding in the jewelry store so it was me and my wife i slapped oh. up on the wall so and it's just like yeah i was basically like a set design a set painter right if you want yeah to that's that cool because then i mean yeah throwing in little easter eggs like that are even more fun but like ha having something that you can like look at the game and go like yeah there's me and my wife in a picture way back there that no one no one yeah. ever really sees but <laughs> do you do that in your work <laughs> yeah I, I hide stuff in my work like there's always numbers and symbol i, I hide my name for Ella in a lot of my paintings so i'll hide the lettering got to kind of like if you go to one of my art shows, there's always people standing in front of the big pieces trying to find the Crayola in it. Yeah. And like, yeah. Oh, there's the C. Oh, there's the R. It's like scratched into a tree or something. And then they just work their way through the piece to find where it says Crayola. So I do that on a lot of the big pieces. But, hey, uh, other than chipmunk blood and dirty water, what media are you most comfortable with? <laughs> <laughs> okay, never dirty water. That was a joke I said in like one of my first interviews. That's haunted me ever since. But like. I, I use I use like so I exclusively use Nova Color paints. And years ago, I found that if you mix the slow dry matte medium 50 50 with the acrylic retarder, it makes a really good good medium for like if you need to use a medium. I usually just use water, but yeah. when I want to slow dry stuff, I'll use that medium because I only do acrylics. I don't paint with oils like oh really like, so. I, yeah, like my my good friend's middle studio mate Bob Dobb, he's an oil painter, so I like his work. On his, yeah, he's great. He's amazing. So he's sometimes saying, "Greg, I need some graffiti on this painting. Sit down, put it in." I'm like, "All right." And so I'd mess around. I like, "Oh, oils are fun too." And so I'd started a couple oil paintings over here, but I'd always ha have so many paintings to get done. I never really switched or or dropped dropped it to relearn oils. I'm just like, "Eh, I'm enjoying acrylics. I'm gonna keep pushing it." And, pushing my knowledge on it and try to to exploit the medium so much that like nobody knows what it is is it oil is it acrylic it's like that this is like like whatever it's just it, it's acrylic your progression has gotten so just like it's it's crazy like it's almost now you've reached a, a point where they go like is that a photograph <laughs> like, it's no, just a, no, no. I, truthfully it is, i know i know it's tough to take those but uh, I, i'm I, I've been a I've been a fan of your work for probably the last fifteen years, and thank you. I never like I don't I, to be honest. I don't follow artists who are alive. I don't like seeing their artwork because I don't want it to affect what I put out uh, accidentally. Yep. So I yep. try I sort of stay away with it. But um, you're like one of the only artists that I like constantly will like look and see like oh yeah that's awesome. I love seeing that new work. I love seeing that. <laughs> I was gonna ask, is it liquid acrylic that you use? Yeah. It's, it's it's more fluid, yeah. It's it's okay. more buttery and a little more fluid. Yeah, Nova Color. It's, it's it, it. Imagine using like fluid golden or liquid text, but it's got a, it's a little bit heavier than that. But it's just like the right consistency. Mm -hmm. It just I don't know. I just love the way it works. Yeah. So and I always have. And it's funny. Like I've been pushing them for like the past fifteen years, and, and they finally dropped me a sponsorship this last year, which I was so <laughs> stoked on. I'm like, yeah, awesome. Now, you know, I get to work with, with them like one-on-one. -on -one. They're, they're really cool. Does that does that come with free paints? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's funny. I haven't needed to do any re-ups on paint since this whole thing started because I've already, I bought so much paint. I have so much paint already. I'm like, well, damn it. The timing's not good on that because I already have a lot of paint. But, and the thing is, when I paint, I paint using the, probably the more least expensive stuff, do underpaintings with right. like more of the umbers and like I make warm grays and just do a whole set of like for underpainting. And then if I'm getting into the cadmiums and the more expensive stuff, you know, I'll, I'll do that as washes. So that it makes everything last longer and my cost doesn't cost as right. much. I w how long can you uh, now? I mean, 
so there's we can't deny the fact that we are getting older uh so i'm wondering i'm curious how long can you sit at a painting now or do you prefer to stand because i see a lot of pictures that you're sitting sitting and standing both uh i'd like to be in front of a if my ideal day is eight to ten hours okay but now it's kind of that's yeah it's not gonna happen i gotta take like one kid to wrestling another kid to jujitsu make sure they're picked up from school you know they're like there's so much like breaks i have to do that it it i don't get to do the full sit down straight through but you know i'll get a good six to eight hours a day and then i'll draw at night on the ipad or on the sketchbook after the kids are in bed or when they're chilling when you draw on the iPad, is that just like a mock-up idea uh, for what you're going to paint? Yeah, I usually start it with in my sketchbooks, and I'll draw thumb All my sketchbooks are really messy thumbnails surrounded by tags and just graffiti letters. I like warm up doing like graffiti throw-ups just because it feels good. It's kind of like how I always used to just draw, and then a character will go next to it. I'm like, oh, that'd be a cool character, and I'll pull it aside. I'm like, what if it was in a landscape like this? And I'll just draw little squares. And then I'm like, oh, that'd work. I'll take a picture with my iPad. And I'll just in procreate, start mm -hmm. doodling over the top of that, blow it up, start adding in characters from other ideas, and then it, everything starts coming together. I'm like, that's the story. That's what needs to be told. Yeah. And then so, I'll... is graffiti your is or like a throw ups or like a or a rabbit? Is that usually will that be your go to? Like if you're not quite feeling it, but you need to get yourself kind of going. Like, oh, is that what it is? Or something, some sort of graffiti, something or? Yep. Yeah. Hundred cool. percent. 100%. Yeah, if you look at my sketchbooks, you'd think it was just like old school black books. It's just, I still draw that way. If I'm doodling, I'll start with the R and then I'll just throw a C in front of it and just move my way down. Just, it's, it's it opens it up. Like it, it, it cracks open my imagination. Yeah, and I like to hear that. And I like to, to have it being uh, mentioned because sometimes some young artists watch our show, but yeah, there, it's okay to have those things that you that you start with. Mine's always an eyeball or tentacles. If I if I don't have anywhere to go, I was like, that's I'll just start drawing that, and then you get in the groove. Hey, I'm nice. curious, what kind of music? Um, or actually, is music a, an important part of your creative process? Yeah, yeah, and it goes in different stages where I'm listening to. Like, you know, I grew up in the punk scene out here. All my friends were in really good bands and just, you know, I was in a sh shitty band for a minute, but then it just turned to me doing the artwork for all the bands, merchandise, album cover. I, like, for me, punk rock and the neighborhood, I, I live in the South Bay where like Black Flag, yeah. Circle Jerks, The Descendants and all these bands came from. So it's just, it's part of our blood. But then it, I'll, I'll get into like, I have a playlist out there called like Stabby Mac Presents Crayola Playlist or something like that. And it's just old cartoon music. Like oh. you may, like any old cartoon or any movie soundtrack that's like cartoon based and like like old Burl Ives stuff just old classic music I like that kind of stuff to listen to when I paint and draw or I can get into like really moody shoegaze stuff like my bloody valentine or stuff like that and just zone out or sometimes it's classical music sometimes it's Frank Sinatra you know it just depends on the mood yeah yeah do you ever use it to to Get yourself into a specific mood yeah the, oh yeah sometimes I'll, I'll i'll just put on like a, a studio ghibli you know like miyazaki soundtracks for like spirit away and all those and totoro and i just play that in the background and i'm totally immersed in that world and that feeling like i'm going to create something like whimsical yeah. today yeah so, it's it's so it does affects you stylistically or not stylistically but kind of thematically what you're going to end up working on the music has an effect of what what will come out yeah, for sure. What, what is the punk? What does punk end up? Uh, do you feel it? That, that's just something just from me being a, a rowdy kid, like running around spray painting the walls, like the Black Flag song, this spray paint the walls, just aggro on the streets, that that wild side. But I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, that what I mean is like what what uh, what will come out? Uh, does it? I guess what I'm saying is yeah. If I'm trying to get something done fast, maybe I'll just throw on some. Do you move quicker when punk when like some punk's going? Oh, I can. I, yeah, if I put on some minor thread or something, I'm just like just, yeah. just painting. You get in the zone, I'm just like boom, 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 boom. Well, yeah, I was a minor threat fan, and I know that you. Uh, I've seen before. You mentioned Jawbreaker was one of your favorites. I don't know a lot of their 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 music, so I won't speak about them. But let me ask you this: Jawbreaker as the candy or Bazooka Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Try Bazooka Joe as a candy if we're choosing candies. I yeah. love Bazooka Joe's. 
Yeah. I, I know you mentioned once that um, that Far Side you were a, you were a, uh, you know fan of Far Side. Does does your hip hop pre- appreciation go beyond that? Or yeah, it, it start. It came before punk rock. Like it was all like from like eighties to nineties. Like being in high school, I, I listened. You know, Tribe Called Quest. You name it. And then like when I met some of the guys in my crew, they were in a a rap group called Shapeshifters. Yep. Oh, yeah. And so I got to know their music and started listening to some more underground hip hop like them. And then Exist, Exist Stereo, who's in Shapeshifters, the English League. And I started doing their album covers too. So, and they all introduced me to what I knew about hip hop. But then I liked, you know, like Guru and all that kind of stuff too. So, um, you know, of course, Beastie Boys. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, it went all over that. But I, yeah, I, that was. I know for me it all went hand in hand with punk rock like Mm -hmm. and the people that you know we were all listening to the same music it would you'd go from one to the other yeah and a lot of the hip-hop artists were inspired by punk so yeah it it, it definitely goes hand in hand well i'd be remiss if i didn't say um cast one of strange famous record he really needs you to be a fan of his music so (laughs) <laughs> yeah. he, owns, he owns he owns so much of your work and <laughs> really and he's That's like cool. one of my favorite mcs and i told him that we were having you on and he was like yeah you're gonna need to tell him he needs to be listening to my music um <laughs> <laughs> do you That's get annoyed cool. do you get annoyed when people suggest you must use you must be a drug user to create the artwork that you create yeah i told I totally get annoyed by that. Like the only time I've ever screwed up any of my art career was drugs. It's like, yeah. I don't need to be on drugs to make, I need to not be on drugs to have an art career. It's like, I, I, I quit any kind of partying and I buckled down and all of a sudden all kinds of good stuff started happening. I remember my friends were out and about, they dropped by my apartment like, yo, you gotta come out. What are you doing drawing? I was at my drawing table. I turned my whole living room into an art studio. And I'm like, that's all I'm doing now. I'm not going out. Okay, whatever, pussy. And then next thing you know, I have an art career. I'm, my school's going better. Like, I, I get my crap together. I meet my wife. You know, I, well, it was my girlfriend at the time. Like, yeah, it's better to not be out there. I don't need to get high at night. I need to, you know, do the business, get my work done. And, and I enjoy it too. It's way better than, you know, doing what I'm watching all my friends ruining their life doing. It's like everybody. Yeah. I knew from parting days were either dying, going to jail, going, you know, screwing their whole career up or just barely making it. Some of them made it out okay, but not everybody did. Yeah, in so, the same situation. And I and I also, I, get, I think what annoys about me is like, I think what people, I'm like, what, you can't be creative without drugs? Like, that's what, I think that part is what really, anno- really annoys me about it. But Adrian yeah. always brings brings me brings it down to a level, and she's like, "Well, sometimes people don't know how to connect. Like they can't, they can't, they don't. They're not creative themselves, so they're like, how can you do something?'" Or some people, only way people see stuff like this is if they've ever done like a, a hallucinogens right. or something. Right. They think oh. that's the only way that we can see it, but we see this stuff in our head just because we're plugged in like that. And like, if I was to do hallucinogens, which I like the one or two times I have, they they totally scared the shit out of me. I'm like, no, my brain's already. <laughs> I don't want to see any of this stuff. You know, I already see stuff like this, but it doesn't need to be alive talking to me. So, like, no, I'm fine. I'm just drawing. What uh, would you rather? Uh, would you rather a portrait of you by Bosch or a movie of you by Burton? Ooh. Oh, crazy. Wow, that's tough. I I, I, I I wouldn't even bend the knee to say that there should be a movie about me by Burton. I'd, that'd be a huge honor, but it's like, ah, because Hieronymus Bosch is like one of my all time favorite up there painters to ever exist. That'd be kind of crazy. But then again, he'd make me look super crazy. Maybe, maybe the movie by Tim Burton now that I think about it, because Bosch would probably have some like crazy bird demon drilling my ass with like a bottle or a bottle opener or something gross like that, like in his paintings. That I don't know if I'd want to see that. That's that's absolutely what he would do. Uh, yeah. Uh, garbage Bell Kids or baseball cards? Garbage Bell Kids. I mean, I did, I done both, right? I did the tops um project 70 baseball cards love doing it but growing up you know i even had baseball cards as a kid but i was all about garbage pill kids and i, I you know thanks to roger gassman i i totally got to do a garbage pill kid a couple years oh, ago cool. and i'm super stoked on it yeah that's so great that's what i mean do yeah you, that's... do you still have your garbage pails from when you're a kid 
You know, I don't. I wish I did. I was such an idiot. I got rid of all that. My Legos, my G.I. Joe, and my Star Wars characters all when I was like 14 at a garage sale at my grandparents' house. And I oh. wish I would have kept all of it, all my Legos. I mean, my kids would have been benefiting from it these days. But it's like, dang it, you never have that for that. I just need some money to buy skateboard parts. So yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you def- I always forget. I wish I had forethought too. I do now, but now I got a bunch of sh- shit around that Adrian's like, we got to get rid of all this shit. I'm like someone's going to want it. <laughs> uh, what a, uh, Mad Magazine or Juxtapose Magazine? Uh, I love Juxtapose. I've been on the cover. Uh, it's one of my favorite magazines, but come on, I grew up on Mad Magazine. That was part of my art influence. I'd have to say Mad Magazine, yeah, but crazy. close second. Well, heavy metal, Mad Magazine, and Juxtapose, I keep all in the same kind of vein. Yeah, because you were Frank, Frank, I mean, obviously, but a Frank Frazetta fan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. love them. Uh, what about Pusshead or Jughead? Gosh, you know, you know, I'm going to have to say Jughead because I would always get Archie comics as a kid, too. Uh, and a lot of everybody would probably think, oh, you're probably a huge Pusshead fan. He's awesome, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know that the old nostalgia of old comics, you know, and whatever I get my hand on as a kid, Archie comics, I had those as a kid, so I'll probably say Chuck. No, I sorry, plus yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I used to always try to draw those the Zorlax skulls, so I always I loved that. Um, if you were here's one, I, I want to just throw a few of these out because I can feel the timers coming to an end. I want to throw out some of these. Uh, uh, yeah. What, Right. It's yeah. Really close. Uh, if if you were on a sinking boat and you had original artwork from both of these artists, but could only yeah. save one of the works, whose would it be? Alex Gray or Alex Party? Alex Party. <laughs> okay. Hundred percent Alex Party. Uh, no apologies either. He's one of my favorite artists, but one of my favorite friends. Um, we both were came up in the graffiti scene, same timing. We happened to meet at a graffiti jam meeting at, what, at the leader at Edgar's house. And uh, we've been close friends ever since. And I'm, dude's like such a rad guy. I love him to death. Yeah. So, good, well, yeah, that one was simple. Yeah, he's just good people. He's one of the best people I know. Well, are you, are you competitive? Uh, yeah, of course, everybody's competitive, especially coming up in the graffiti scene. You see what somebody does, you want to push yourself to be better than that. I think that's what's always pushed me, that mentality, kind of like get up, go up bigger than the last guy. But as far as like like in a dark sense, no. Like I like to push everybody. I like to encourage my friends. I like to see everybody do good. Yeah, it's like a healthy competitiveness. Yeah, I think I have a healthy competitiveness. Yeah. You know, but I like well, to bring people along the way. Yeah, yeah. What what's a, what's your favorite term for for a spray can? Oh gosh, spray can. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I just I yeah I, I hate saying spray can. I I've always loved rattle can. I don't know. It's always been one of my favorites. <laughs> so I, I think it goes by region. It, that's a regional thing. Like some of the graffiti guys I grew up with, the San Diego guys will call it like say you're doing a border on your piece when you're spray paint. You put like an outer border. They call it oh shoot, I shouldn't have said. Oh, uh, they call it a, a force field. Oh. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go painting with my buddy Work and Phobia, and like, oh, did you put your force field on? Or what color are you doing your force field? And my buddy Lango, I'm like, what the hell is a force field? Like your outer outline? You mean your outline, your border? Yeah, yeah, your force field. I'm like, that's stupid. So, and then or we'd have make these little um, um, stencil caps. We call them stencil caps. They call them zap caps, or they call them um, oh gosh, they have different name from cheater caps. And just, I'm like, yeah, it's a stencil cap. You're straining or a strain. Uh, I'm like, whatever. So everybody has always had their different terminology depends on the region. Every, since the internet though, everything kind of comes together, yeah. but it was fun. Like, you know, if you're with San Diego kids, if they mm-hmm. said force field, if you were with San, San Francisco kids, they would say something completely different. And it's like, okay, so whatever we in LA say is right. So whatever you guys are saying is wrong. <laughs> That's funny. It's, oh, then New York. Oh yeah, the New York guys always had different term up. I'm like, okay, New York has it right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was the same with like skateboard tricks. Like everyone called something, uh, some certain trick, a different word for it. And I guess that was the importance Translate. of magazines back then. That was kind of how and you learned what videos called things. Was yeah, videos. D- does your affection yeah. for rabbits bleed into uh, a love for Easter? I never thought of it that way. 
like you know celebrating easter over here like i grew up in a christian home so it's like not just about bunny rabbits sure. you know so yeah so we never like made it about the easter bunny but i always like easter i like i have like easter bunnies and stuff because i think they look cool and i always like the the ranking and bass um stop motion the easter bunny like I, that's just part of my love for stop motion is watching those old holiday specials yeah like this so the, what's the scent the rudolph one i yeah, love that one. One. yeah that's that's ranking and bass it's the oh i forget i should know the name off the top of my head i have i have the toy right here it was awesome that they showed up that that's what i feel made elf so great the movie elf was yeah that was just yeah. fantastic it was like it was yeah hey if you could oh, only use fun fact we were doing i'm scared the movie it was filmed in the same place where they did the stop motion for elf so they had the actual maquettes there oh, oh how cool. great that's awesome <laughs> but uh yeah you got to see that adrian i should have sent that over to you it's really cool it's okay i'll watch it yeah it's really cool uh, if you could only you only work with either of these two for the rest of your life which would you choose crayons or markers shoot sorry crayons markers <laughs> yeah, <markers. laughs> I, was gonna say, I was gonna say i think he means crayons oh yeah crayons sorry <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's another regional word yeah, i guess crayons. crayon <laughs> i don't even know how i said. Crayons, you said, crayons you said you said crayons i say crayons i don't know <laughs> yeah that's a uh yeah, um, yeah markers yeah <laughs> oh in in speaking to people with people who collect your artwork um or even just people who appreciate it. Do you have a sense of what it is about your work that they mostly connect to? You know, it's crazy. No, I I, I, I have to ask them, I, what, what do you like about this? Or what's your thing? And you know, you don't know, I guess I do. Cause they always say that's like a, the wonderland whimsicalness of it. Like going to another world. Like it's like a picture of a story they haven't been told. So oh. I like, I like that. I get that. And cause for me, I'm, I'm working out a story. And yeah, it hasn't been told, but it does have a very, I just fell into Wonderland kind of feel to it. What, so what, when you go into working on a piece, are you consciously, do you consciously approach it or do you, do you just uh, let it go? No, I consciously approach it. I mean, there's lots of redraws. There's, I plan, I map everything out and, and then I leave a lot of open space for in the moment like spontaneity because usually if i'm drawing like a nine foot painting up if i'm drawing it on a screen this big or on a sketch paper this big i'm obviously there's gonna be things opened up that i wouldn't have noticed when i'm yeah. on the nine feet like nine by six or whatever then all of a sudden it's like whoa i could have put something here what would look cool and i'll just sit and look at it i'll take a picture of it and then i'll just start drawing on top of the picture what would mm -hmm. look cool there and then from that picture reference i'll take a white charcoal pencil and I'll go back to the painting and just look at it and draw it on do and you, then I'll paint it. And I do a lot of that. Do you? Well, do you like? Do you like working large scale more than 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 smaller scale? My absolute favorite is big scale. I if I could just do only that for the rest of my life, I'd be stoked. But you know, I have to go smaller for different you know purposes. So well, yeah, it's fine. also yeah, it's a large space to fit artwork in there. <laughs> or right, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, just what, did that go? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, because I can feel like I'm taking a bit. My of time. phone was on silent, so it didn't go. Let off. me. Your drawings look great, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I've gotten to the to the quick little shading. I will later give it all the detail, but I usually like to start putting in white highlights before I just see. But real quick, yeah. I wonder if people are attracted to you guys' work and people like you guys' work because um, the reality can be so harsh and what you were saying with the whimsy and stuff and they're connected to the that it's not right here right now it's not stressful yeah i did a, i did a whole show called the escape artist just because i'm thinking of this work as an escape as a like like you like going away from the stresses it's just like well this is something else it's like reading a good book you can just mm -hmm. get lost in it and so I, I think of it as an escape also. So I, I wish I could have seen that show in person. I, that was a beautiful uh, body of work. I, 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 it just blew me away. I, I, fantastic. All right, I'll Thank let you, you get out here. Let me give you, a, um, before we go, I do useless facts. Here's a useless fact. I got two facts. One's, one's about Bosch. Um, Hieronymus okay. Bosch was not his real name. He actually went by, uh, his real name was Jeron or Joan um his surname was anthony and uh 
He lived in a town called Den Bosch, which means the forest. Wow. So I believe that's where his last name came from. Bosch was also a devout Christian, which most people don't realize. I think I knew that. And then I, I wanted to do the Do, uh, Dolly, uh, Salvador Dali facts. Uh, he once collaborated on an experimental animation film with Walt Disney. That movie's called Destino or Destino, the love story between God of Time and uh, the woman named Dahlia. And then uh, he believed he was a reincarnation of his brother, also named Salvador. Yeah. Oh, well, is, but his parents, didn't his parents his, his, kind of make him believe Yes, that? his older brother died nine months before he was born. And when he was five years old, he was standing over his brother's grave. And his parents told him that he was a reincarnation of his brother. And it messed with his psyche for the rest of his life. Yeah, I can understand that mess with the kid's head. Yeah. Uh, to, to avoid restaurant bills, he used to, Dolly used to also draw on the backs of checks. Uh, oh, yeah. I got a Salvador Dolly story if you have time. Yeah. I do, absolutely. Okay, so I did a signing with Stan Lee at Dragon Con a few years ago. It was a print I had painted of like a spider Spider Man with Daredevil in it, and then Stan Lee's in the window. So, and I was for a Stan Lee appreciation show. So later we did prints of it, and he came and sat with me for like an hour at Dragon Con. We signed it together. And he was telling me all these stories. So he told me a story. He was at a bar with his wife and then left early. He wasn't feeling well. And his wife comes back. She said, oh, my gosh, this man was hitting on me the whole time. And you weren't there. It was awkward. And he he drew me this picture on a napkin and tried to hit on me. And I just ended up throwing it away. And he's like, who was it? She's like, his name was Salvador Dali. And he's like, oh what? You should have kept that napkin. I don't care if this man was hitting on you. So like Salvador Dali was hitting on Stanley's wife and she wow. threw the napkin away. Oh wow. man. Yeah, that's so that corroborates that story that he yeah. used to get free. Do you, yeah, what? Well, yeah, that can you imagine? Yeah, what would that like? Not that it, like money's not a thing, but it's still so. I mean, it's just cool to own something like that. But I yeah. mean, shit. Have, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. You, well, you got your story is one that I go pass on. Like, oh yeah, uh, Corella was uh, signing with Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a mind blowing time too. Yeah. I still look at pictures and get chills. That was fun. Yeah, you've got a you've got a very impressive and um, uh, a career, and obviously it's not over. Like you're you're constantly. I just I I, I appreciate watching what you do. So it's just it, it was, it's awesome to even be able to have a conversation with you. Do you ever do the draw? Do you ever draw on uh, the na- the tables or or anything? Yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah, I leave like, drawings sometimes. Yeah, it's actually I, a good way. To, I'll, I'll leave stickers and like you know I make slide, you know art stickers or whatever. I'll leave handful of stickers i'll draw on doodle on stuff yeah i'll do that just for the heck of it just to see i don't know yeah i don't know i don't do it for free meal (laughs) no that's what i was gonna say because yeah we we'll be at shows like when we're doing a show at a weekend at certain places usually the waitress or whoever's serving us at the restaurant had seen us at the show or not not that i get recognized a lot but i'd get recognized so i would draw on their a napkin or on that white table you know the paper and leave it to them but i'd never ever have the gall to no. Not pay the bill or or say here's your tip my yeah. drawing like that's <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. Please. I keep a handful of stickers with me in case I meet anybody when I'm out and about. So yeah. I always I want people to be like, oh that was cool, you know. So. Uh, oh, uh, so two last ones. Uh, I have this thing called uh, I've just added to the show called sharing music is one of my favorite love languages, and that came from my cousin. Uh, whose music are you excited to share with others? Oh gosh! Right now, Deviates. Um, that was my friend's punk band. They took a twenty-year hiatus, just came back, and um, they're playing shows again. They just played Punk in the Park. But they're they're just such a such a good band. If you like punk music, they're yeah. they're great. But, um, cool. Yeah, that, they're some of my best friends too. Yeah, that's and cool. it's just to see the resurgence. But that they, that my buddy Brian can still write great songs, and they still hit you. And they're and he's such a good dude. 
and it, it, I got my start doing their album cover and merchandise, and then they were doing Warp Tour back in the day. It's like, yeah, those guys. Awesome. Great, tr- great share. I'll share one. You probably know it. Uh, well, I won't put you on the spot. Were you a NoFX fan at all? Yeah, I like NoFX. Of course. Well, everybody likes NoFX. <laughs> yeah, so there, so so Fat Mike's new band, The Co-Defendants. Um, I, don't oh, I haven't heard that. Oh, it's it just came out. It ju- their album, yeah, th- this is their first album that just came out. That's his new band, and our friend Chesky's oh, in nice. the band, and it's so oh. so good. It's so good. I've considered suicide by police, which I hit myself, but my fingers missing. So I guess I'll stare at a wall and scream for now. I've broken the feeling for no particular reason. Quit now. It's kind of got a, like a, a some some of that old ska vibe to it too. Like yeah, it's so good. So that's my share with you. All right, we end Ooh. our show with a final philosophical question, and here's your philosophical discussion uh, or your question. Not really a question, but oh well. uh, it's a discussion coming directly from Mr. Philosophy himself, Plato and and Socrates both. But uh, they okay. say cre- creativity is the result of divine inspiration. It comes about when the muses breathe into the creative person, sending him or her into a temporary state of madness. Is that accurate, or do you have a different idea of where creativity comes from? I can see that. That sounds accurate. I don't know about the madness part. It depends on what they mean by madness, but that sounds pretty much right, because like, creativity is not something that's physical or material. It's something that's totally more on spiritual, like like. I think it's imbued by a creator, but other people might think it's something else. But it, it's, I, I think it's something definitely more on the spiritual side of things, and it could possibly be anything material. So I, I think that sounds pretty. I think Plato kind of had it right. I don't know about madness, though. I don't think there may have been that there were. were it may just be a, a, a translation of Greek word. Maybe they weren't actually right. meant madness, but what we understand the word madness meaning now out of the ordinary maybe yeah. maybe it can be related to the like the the zone that you get in and you just can't stop and you can't stop working and you keep working that could be okay yeah. i can see that, that as man <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well hey so any new books or exhibitions coming up um or what can people uh, expect from you in the future consistently working on paintings and projects i have some fun stuff coming up i can't talk about the one thing right now that i'm working on because i haven't signed all the paperwork it hasn't been all signed off on but it should be hitting um november in november yeah but um yeah keep check out my youtube channel i keep posting new painting videos um that's constantly going out new prints coming out soon new merch coming up soon so i'm um, always working on some fun stuff hey but, did, yeah there's a did your youtube channel start getting very active during the, the 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 peak of the pandemic absolutely it blew up it's like like at 233 3, subscribers right now but during the pandemic i just started posting more because what else are you going to do it also yeah. just boom boom boom, boom hit the past the hundred thousand mark real quick and then just climb, climb, climb. But I'm like, holy crap, what am I to do? And then, but it's opened the eyes to a lot of new collectors, which yeah. a lot of collectors are coming from YouTube. And I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, I love it. I love being able to use YouTube as a as a way of putting my artwork out there. Do you find that great. social media uh, and the, and YouTube, do you find that overwhelming a little bit? Like it takes up a little more time than, than you would like? at all uh it's hard it's hard to be consistent for the youtube because my paintings take so long so now they have shorts on there it helps a bit because i'm not able to like upload consistently every week but i do every single painting i i film the entire painting and i edit it i put a video up for every single painting so i love that part that's harder to keep up with but like the social media i've been tapped into it ever since like freaking friendster and myspace and you know the very beginnings of it I always just posted my stuff like my philosophy is to just put it in front of as many eyes as possible same reason i did graffiti is like whether you want to see it or not here it is and you know people tend if they like it they like it great that brings new audience new clients if not whatever 
So I think it's a good tool for artists. Yeah, and looking at it as a tool rather than anything else, I think is a benefit for artists. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm not gonna let you get out here until I give you this FMK, and it can be fight, marry, kill instead of okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so speaking of, uh, you did the Tony Hawk game. Uh, oh, before I give you this, let me ask you this, Sophie's Choice. Zelda or Contra? Oh, Zelda. Cool. I don't know why. Just, I just think of the imagery. Yeah, well, you were a D&D &D fan, weren't you, or, or not? Not oh. really. I, okay. I, I like the imagery. I never got into it. All my friends played it. I didn't, I, again, I was just like, like the, the art. Mm. Yeah, that's the same with me. The books, the, the those original books that came out, the artwork on there was fantastic. All right, here's your here's your FMK. Tony Hawk, Tony Danza, and oh, I was gonna say Tony A Wall One. Well, I'll just give you those three then. <laughs> oh gosh, who would I want to fight, dude? I'm not good at these things, dude. Uh, Tony Danza. <laughs> let's let's fight Tony Danza. Oh, you fight Tony Danza, Oscar, right? <laughs> yeah, he was. But he's like 80, yeah. so you'll be fine. Yeah, that's fine. No, he'll probably still beat my ass, but it'd just be fun to say I got in a fight with Tony Danza. And people say, whoa, you fought Tony Danza? Hell yeah. Look at this black guy. Um, Mary, I don't know, dude. Who Tony Hawk, because he's got all the skateboarding Hawk. stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, like, I still, I enjoy watching skateboarding. Like, we spent the whole pandemic at the skate park with my oldest son. He's a, he's a really good skater and grew up in skateboarding. So it's big part of our life over here. Wait, your son and is I don't a... want to kill people. Well, well, my son's yeah. a skater, yeah. Oh. He skates, now wrestles, jujitsu, football. He's like all outdoor athlete kid, but was really hardcore skater until this last year when his friends talked him into playing football. I'm like, what's happening uh, to you? Like, I know. I don't know. How, how old He's is happy. he? He's an athlete. 15. Okay, yeah, that's when they start either. That's what I did. I quit football to start skateboarding, and my parents were freaking out. Cause <laughs> but no, I'm freaking out way. that he stopped skating. Like This kid's like airing out of bowls and stuff. Like He rips, and I'm just like, why are you playing football? I'm like, okay, whatever. I, I'm going to let you uh, do the – I'm going to turn the K the K to kiss. So you're kissing a wall, And uh, that way I'll yeah, save, we'll save, that I'll save you the heart, heartbreak of that. Because I did want to yeah, say – he's awesome. I would never want to kill that dude. He's rad. <laughs> Yeah, he's the best. Uh, when you, when you, uh, if you're ever out in uh, in Missouri area, we have a home out there in, in Hannibal, Missouri. But we have some friends in St. Louis that own this place called Skate Laborious, and it's a it's an old church that they turned into a skate park. Um, the, wow. the city gave it to them, and it's a really incredible place, and it's got huge ramps, and it's so yeah. Bring your and it's bring full your, of graffiti, and it's and full of graffiti. Art. And uh, yeah, skate. so yeah, come out and skate. Bring your son out and come out and skate. Skate laborious. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks so I much for you your guys. time, man. I'm sorry we ate you up. I, I'll get this finished up and and um, and and sent over to you. And uh, I'll reach out to you uh, in a few days when it's finished and get your information on where to send it to. Uh, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for joining us. Nice talking to you too. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Cheers. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hey. painting. <laughs> Take Bye. care, guys. Peace. Bye. Awesome. Yeah, that is with our I wanted to tell him I wanted to ask him if uh he knew cuz he brought up Studio is it Ghibli? Studio Ghibli, yeah. That they're they've they're opening a theme park in Japan for the oh. summer. But yeah, it's weird cool. like when you talk to someone on that on that level, someone who's can say stuff like, "Oh yeah, I was doing a signing with Stanley." You yeah. know, it was funny when he was talking about that. We almost didn't we almost do that Dragon Con? Mm, yes. That was that Stanley yeah. celebration. Yes. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. They still owe me money for that. We didn't uh, end up. Right, but his he was there. But he yeah, was there as an invited. But still, we <laughs> were almost there as well. Yeah, it was cool that you know what's funny. While we're here in Utah, our son calls. He says the clouds in Utah are Studio Ghibli. Yeah, Studio Ghibli clouds. <laughs> Studio. He calls the Utah clouds Studio Ghibli clouds. Salt Lake. Well, it's just funny that he, our son, so it's such a visual type that he notices the difference between clouds in Utah and the clouds and in elsewhere. Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah, that was a, it's like a huge honor for me to be able to do this drawing for, for Crayola. And yeah, I, I, I get, I get caught up. I don't ever, 
I don't get too like um, what's it called like fan 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 f- yeah the first our first show with uh, say Francis I was definitely fanning out on the inside people have told me that they didn't notice. But I was fanning out, like in my inside, I was like, holy shit, I'm fucking talking to Sage Francis. Uh, I think I think that was happening here. The difference is, I, 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 I am now in a part of my career where I have collectors and this is what I do for a living, but I still, I'm still, you know, I'm still looking up, or still talking to someone who I look up to as an artist, but it's a different feeling because I'm now actually, you know, working in this Maybe field. appreciate rather, or do you look up to him? Well, I don't, it, that's what I'm saying. It's, I can't, it's weird to say that now where I'm at, but I, I do still like, cause it was like a, a, one of the artists when I was growing up and he's only like, we tend to think of things age wise. I mean, he's really only three years older than me, but that three years difference from when i was 12 or from when i was 15 he was 18 and he was just getting noted well i don't i obviously i'm struggling to explain what i'm trying to say here but um it was just really cool and exciting for me to talk with him and i could just feel myself going like oh i'm sure he's got to get to painting like i'm sure he doesn't want to bother with this shit so i sort of rushed it a bit and i'm now I didn't feel like overthinking going like, I wonder if he felt like we were rushing him out. Oh, I didn't feel like it was okay. rushed at all. I thought it was great. I thought he was really nice and really cool. And um, the similarities in the things that he was into growing up uh, comparatively to the things that both you and I were into growing up it was just, um, he just seemed like one of the guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, yeah. And really the truth is like if you look at the work, it's based, I mean, I guess it's, well, shoot, I'm not going to overanalyze that. I don't know. We, it, I was looking, going through all his work again, and I don't personally see like a too similar visually between the two, uh, but no, I can see but... why people do see that. I'm never, I've never ever been well, compared. You guys aren't doing landscapes. You're not doing like the straight. Uh. What's yeah. The, what's the word? word? Like, uh, what do you call it? Like realist realism. Like just whatever you're seeing. Landscapes. You're, too. you're just painting it. It's yeah, realism. Kind of straightforward right? thing. You guys are adding more creativity and um, I don't have the words either. <laughs> wow, look at you. No, I, I I don't know. Really know what I'm saying, actually, but I can see that where you guys differ from somebody um who why you guys might get the same audience thinking you're on drugs or right is because the you put things together that don't always go together yeah and that's what would be similar about it that's all well yeah not that i've never i don't think i've ever heard anyone say oh you works like crayola i often get oh have you heard of alex party i do i hear that quite often um but it might be because the the black line. There's a little more black lines in in Alex Pardee's work than 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 Crayola's because like his are so colorful. And, um, I don't know. I, I well, you guys would just have the same um, person attracted to each of your work, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because and it might be for like a subject matter. That's the word I was looking for. Some of the subject matter because he does a lot of animals. He does a lot of mm-hmm. birds and stuff. But yeah, as a just a viewer, when viewers look at artwork, they just see what they're looking at. I notice, oh, that's painted and those highlights are different. I'm, mine's a drawing. So yeah, I think technically I go like, how? Why? They don't look anything alike. But this one I do feel like has a very uh, Crayola vibe. That's what I was going for. But it might just be because of um, Oswald. Yeah. yeah Any thoughts on that on that discussion? Because I don't want I don't want to leave just yet. I'm kind of me. Yeah. Because uh, here's what's happening to me. This is what I was going for. I'm on a high right now mm-hmm. because that was a, a, a for me. That was like talking to um, I don't know when I was doing movies. That would have been the equivalent of of talking to Tarantino or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he was really cool. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to leave yet. <laughs> oh well, he's gone. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm saying I'm, I'm having a conversation with you. What, what, any thoughts about uh, the discussion? Anything that you want to? I'm sorry, but no. Okay. He was just a really nice guy. It was very open and uh, easy to talk to. Yeah, he was, and I'm glad too. Uh, yeah, what a what a career he's he's had and is having. And all right, well, listen, June seventeenth. I'm gonna just announce it every, on, on every episode. Um, and I will just mention we don't have to say it every time. Sage Sage had figured uh, Crayola's most of his social media posts are about the artwork, and that's not necessarily a field that uh, that Sage is in. So that didn't come through. Or do I even need to mention that? Probably not, huh? Uh, June 17th, Strange Famous Fest in Denver. We are going. So many people are going. Uh, we hope to see your faces there. Um, oh, can I tell a quick story real quick? Well, I'm su- surprised you're not telling people that we'll be in Atlanta. Oh, well, I was trying. Yeah. Yeah. Good thinking. I don't know That's if, what you're when this airs, but. Yeah, we will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, you know what? It might. might already look, at your, look at your calendar while I tell this story. How about that? Okay, well, I don't know when this will air. Yeah, that's what I, so. Oh, does it, you have it's, that It's on? in the calendar. Okay. Because next week is uh, DJ Abilities. Oh, yes, this will be next week. No, that's DJ Abilities. I changed, it got switched. So it won't yeah, be. Yeah, we'll be fine. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah, it'll be the Wednesday it'll right be before. like next, this weekend we're at. Yeah, so this weekend we'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, Midtown, uh, hanging with Killer Mike. Um, just kidding. We won't be, <laughs> but we will be in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're uh, out that way, come see us uh, at the the um, what's that park called? Piedmont Park. Piedmont Park. We'll be there. Uh, I'll be in area number fifteen. Can't miss us. We have not been in uh, Georgia for. We haven't done that show in like maybe ten years. It's been quite a while. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing y'all there. That show has always been a good one. We've got a lot of collectors in Atlanta. So come see us there. And then I'll just skip my story. I'll tell it later. It's a story about Boots Riley's post about Pam the Functress. 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 Funk, Pam the Functress. Yeah. I'll save that for another episode. Thanks so much, Crayola, for joining us. Um, I'm going to go watch that CBS uh, um documentary i saw that and i was gonna watch it but it just things we did our taxes i don't know, so much was going on that was too hard for me to stay in touch but i feel great about the the places that the dod 45 show are going and i feel great about you right now on the live chat with us <laughs> we should throw some shout outs real quick we'll say hello to your cousin sarah hello she's always on who else can we say hello to that's often on Oh, you want to you want to go? I got to pee too, huh? Time to go. That's fine. Go ahead. That Just smile on your face is like that's enough. I don't know. I'm not really paying attention on the live chat. I hate to say it. That's why I was trying oh. to duck out. I'm answering on the live chats. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I try to glimpse it. Yeah. I'm... Thanks everybody for watching. Hey, Have bye. A... Oh. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy drawing, happy conversing, and thanks for conspiring with us. We out of here. Artbytie.com, DOD45.com. Subscribe. Like us. Just kidding. All right. Thanks, Creole. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Thank you for joining in on yet another episode of the DOD45 show. Please hit the subscribe or follow button so that you never miss an episode. You can even go one step further by leaving us a review on the YouTube stream or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever it is that you stream our show from. You can find me at Art by Ty on all the socials or at artbytie.com. And if you'd like to follow the DOD45 show on social media, we're at DOD45W on Instagram, or you can go over to our website at DOD45.com where you can shoot us an email, join our mailing list, and watch all of our past episodes. Consider joining us for a live chat on the YouTube premieres of episodes every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Peace.